How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donahue here again. This time we're gonna take a look at covalent bonding. Specifically, our objectives will be to describe what covalent bonding is, draw Lewis structures for covalent compounds, and describe what occurs for multiple covalent bonds, double bonds, triple bonds. So let's get started. Covalent bonding, what's with that stuff? Well, most substances don't behave like ionic substances. So if they behave differently, maybe it's because they're bonded together differently, was the original thought, and then it turns out, yeah. So instead of transferring electrons like in ionic bonding, covalent compounds share electrons. So in ionic bonding, you have one thing losing an electron, another thing gaining it. That's not what's happening here. So instead, it's atoms kind of pooling their electrons, going, hey, I'll share one of mine if you share one of yours. And then that way they end up with more electrons, right? So the way it goes is both of these hydrogens think that those electrons are theirs, but they're really being shared. So now they're both satisfied because they both have those two electrons. This is still going to achieve the noble gas configuration, which is why it becomes more stable. So what, wait a minute, Mr. Donahue, I know that positive nuclei repel each other, right? Positives and positives want to repel. I also know electron clouds repel because electrons are negative, negative repels a negative. Then why do atoms bond? Why are they getting close to each other if there's, there's so much repulsion? Well, the short answer is the nuclei are attracted to the electron densities of the other atoms. So when they come together and bond, sure, like this uh, nucleus is positive, but all of this cloud is negative. So it's being attracted to that negativeness and then vice versa the other way. This nuclei that's positive is attracted to that other atoms, electrons, which is gonna pull them together. Now, if you try to get them closer, then they are right now yeah they're going to repel and push away but they found a low energy state where they're bonded together so lewis structures how do we draw these how do we represent these bonds well first let's start with single bonds so for atoms that only need one more electron to achieve a noble gas configuration we get single bonds so each atom shares one of its electrons with the other atom and keeps the rest for themselves so for hydrogen, they only have one. They each kick in the one electron and they share them with each other. The shared electrons are placed between the two elemental symbols. And sometimes instead of drawing dots between them, uh, you show a line. So for hydrogen, it would just be, all right, hydrogen dash hydrogen. And these two electrons are represented by that single line. So for chlorine, well, chlorine has seven valence electrons, so it wants to make a single bond to get eight. So you can either draw them as each, like, hey, I'm going to donate this one if you donate that one, and we'll share the pair. You can draw them as dots, or you can draw them with a line. So these electrons only belong to this chlorine, right? That chlorine isn't sharing those electrons, and then these ones only belong to this chlorine. It's not sharing those other six, but they each donated one so that they together can each have eight. So multiple single bonds. Turns out some atoms need to make more than one bond and they can make multiple single bonds with multiple other atoms in order to complete their octet. So each single bond is made up of one electron from each atom in the bond. So it's kind of like each atom gets one more electron for every time it makes a bond. So for carbon, well, it has four valence electrons. To get to the octet, it needs to get four more. So it's gonna wanna make four bonds, four single bonds. So if I had four hydrogens that each wanna make one bond, I get methane, right? So another way to draw this instead of drawing the dots is to replace the shared electrons with lines. So you would get a Lewis structure that looks like this. All right. Well, what about, uh, you know, more multiple single bonds? For example, nitrogen has five valence electrons and it needs, well, then it needs three more to reach the stable octet or the noble gas configuration. So it's going to make three single bonds and we're going to get a Lewis structure that looks like this. If I were to rewrite it, I'd go nitrogen. It's keeping these two electrons for themselves, but then it's making three single bonds with three different hydrogens. All right, what about oxygen? Well, I know oxygen has six valence electrons, so it's going to need to make two bonds to reach the octet or the noble gas configuration. So there you go. Hydrogen needs to make one bond, so there you go. The oxygen will bond with two hydrogens, and then I could redraw that 
as such. And that's, uh, you know, some water right there. That's a water molecule. All right, so let's get into multiple bonds. They don't all have to be single bonds. So atoms can make multiple bonds with one other atom, right? So instead of each pitching in one electron each, they can each pitch in multiple, two or three each. So for example, here, oxygen, well, I know it needs to make two bonds. It just made a single bond with that other oxygen. It's kind of like they're going, hey, that was great, but like I still need to make another bond. The other oxygen's like, OMG, me too. You want to make another bond with me? And the other guy said, that's a great idea. So they pitch in another set of electrons. Then that way they end up with an octet. This oxygen has four that it's not sharing, right? Here's two, here's the other two. And four that are being shared with it. And then this oxygen, same thing. So now they each have eight. We call what we see here a double bond. So with double bonds, we have two ele electron pairs being shared and we draw two lines. So for oxygen, we'd go oxygen, two lines, oxygen, and then we, we can show the unshared pair of electrons. I like to put them symmetrically around the element. For triple bonds, it's the same idea, but instead this time it's three electron pairs being shared. So nitrogen, when it bonds with another nitrogen, is donating well, they're each sharing three electrons with the other one. So now they each think they have eight. This nitrogen's like, sweet, I got my octet. This nitrogen thinks it's in the same boat. They got their octet. And for this one, you're going to draw three lines. So you go, all right, nitrogen, nitrogen, triple bond means three lines. All right, that's one line. And then they each keep two electrons to themselves. So multiple bonds and bond length. The general pattern is as the number of electrons being shared between two atoms increases, the bonds get shorter or the nuclei get closer together. So single bonds are the longest because we're only sharing two electrons. And as you get down and move to triple bonds, they become the shortest. The more electrons being shared, the more tightly those atoms are bonded together. And you can see the, uh, the bond lengths for a single bond, double bond, and triple bond decrease and then I even had them shown to scale in the picture. So you can see how it decreases over time. So summarize, can you describe what covalent bonding is? Can you draw Lewis structures for, for covalent compounds? Can you describe what occurs for multiple covalent bonds? And can, yeah, well, that's it. I said it like there was more to say, but that was it. Okay, bye.